did two months ago in a conference called Jungle Day Copenhagen. This is from the conference. It's a really, really nice small conference. One day, one track. We had, I think, nine dogs and lightning dogs. And it was a super great experience. And I highly recommend joining next year in 2023. It's, it's one of the favorite conferences of, of mine. So this is a, a variation of that. But let's start with a, a bit of an exercise. Raise your hand if you've ever written a bug. Any kind of code that didn't do what you expected it to do. And if there's anybody who didn't raise their hand, they probably have never written code. Because it's inevitable that we make mistakes. Some of them are technical mistakes in terms of, of like, we, we do the wrong thing. And some of them are logical mistakes in terms of, we tried to do something, but the computer didn't agree. It still works. It just does the wrong thing. My name is Hugh Hiss. I work here at Futurist as a developer advocate. I've been at the company for a little bit over four years. I get to spend my days doing this. Every week there's a couple of events with different developer groups. And for me, Python has always been my favorite language and really close to my heart. In addition to what I do at Futurist, I also teach programming and I mentor juniors trying to get people from different backgrounds, different interests, a lot of career changers to get into the technology field. Because I think it's important that we have a diverse group of people building the technology of the future. I also run a couple of communities myself. I'm the founder of Turku Lab Frontend, which is a frontend meetup in Turku. I run Helsinki Dev Lunch, which is a monthly lunch gathering in Helsinki. And I'm one of the organizers at the React Finland conference that is coming up next fall. I also occasionally tweet about technology and I write a weekly blog, sometimes about technology, sometimes about life, communities. Especially lately, it's been kind of a little bit more all over. And I'm super excited to be speaking today on this meetup. This is my first talk at the Helpy Meetup. My first ever tech talk was in Baikon, Finland, 2016. That was my first ever talk. I did a live coding session with no backup slides. Because I was first timer and I didn't know that you should have backups. Luckily, it went really well. I didn't need any backups. I had two slides. The opening slide and a thank you slide. And everything else I, I was kind of winging it. And I, I was just wondering who else thinks that we're in this picture. I think there might must be some people. This is Baikon Finland 2016. There's at least a couple of people. Basically, you don't need to find yourself, but if you attended Baikon Finland 2016, you're part of the group. That was a big part of me getting excited about communities and especially becoming a, a speaker. But we're not here to remember the past, but rather to talk about debugging. And there's one kind of dominant feeling that is associated with debugging, and that is stress, anxiety. Debugging is often seen as a really negative thing. Often when I talk with developers, they say that debugging is the thing that they want to do the least when it comes to software development. For me, it's the thing I like to do the most. I really, really like debugging. And I hope to give some ideas during this talk for those of you who think about it through the stress. But why is debugging often so stressful? There's deadlines. We never have unlimited time to build something, especially if there's actual users for it. There's a lot of internal expectations. This industry is riddled with like imposter syndrome, comparing each other to others, thinking, am I good enough? And when you're trying to solve something that you don't know how to solve, those feelings can become stronger. There's also a lot of external expectations from your teammates, your manager, your client, your users. Everybody wants things to work 
move on and become less stressed. So let's start with the fundamentals, the building blocks. Quite often when we encounter a problem, we might get a little bit of feeling of panic. Oh, I need to fix this fast so that nobody gets mad or even that nobody notices. But if you're rushing into things, I think we all know that it never leads to good stuff. Even if it's Friday afternoon and you just want to make the hot fix so you can leave for the weekend. I've done it a couple of times and pretty much every time on Monday you find that five other things broke and then you need to re-roll back your kind of smart hot fix. Yes. Sometimes they take a little bit longer due to kind of surface. Yes. This 
just want to make sure that you're at the right part of the card. When I did this talk at the Copenhagen, one person asked kind of why certain people are giving juniors the advice that, that print is bad. And I think it's partially because we don't want print to end up in the production most often. But if you take that and you kind of simplify it to saying don't put print into your code, you're losing a really valuable tool. And I would argue you shouldn't leave any of the debugging stuff into your production code. Running debugger in production is probably not the best thing. But print is so simple. You can start with just I was here, but then you can print out variables, some data, just kind of explore a little bit. But what print needs is you add it, you run, you see what happens, then you make a change, you run it again, and it can become quite cumbersome to kind of jump around. So the next tool in the toolbox is the debugger. If you're using Python 3.7 or later, as I hope many of you get to use, there's a, a standard library function breakpoint. If you are still stuck in the unfortunate past of, of legacy code, then you need to import PDB and set the trace. If you're using 3.7, I hope you're using 3.10, because 3.10 is, in my opinion, the best Python version, especially because of pattern matching and a little bit improved error messages. But this is how you invoke a breakpoint. And to those who are not familiar with breakpoints, the idea is that when the execution hits this line, it stops everything it's doing. And it gives you this kind of a rebel on the first line, you can see PDB in parentheses. That's your rebel prompt. And then you can run different commands to kind of explore what's happening. The first one is list, which tells you where in the code are we right now. It's especially handy if you put multiple breakpoints. I usually like to only have one at a time because it makes things a little bit easier at least to kind of make sure that I hit the same endpoint or the, the breakpoint. If you type arcs, you get a printout of the arguments. And in my experience, there's so often the case that you look at the code at the function and you're like, like it just does the right thing and I can't find any mistake. And then it turns out that the arguments were wrong. You were getting something else. If you don't use like typing, you might get completely wrong types, maybe none, when you expect something else. But even if you use types, you might get the wrong values. And that tells you, hey, the problem is one step above. But you also get the REPL that you get if you type Python. So you can type any variable, any Python expression, and you get the outcome. So this lets you stop at one place and explore what's happening. You can look, you can move 
think that you kind of know where it is. So you're looking at the problem. The next step is the Jungo Deepak toolbar, which is a super popular kind of, you set it up before you have problems. And then you can use it to kind of investigate stuff. So it looks like this on the front end. You get this sidebar on the right. And then you can look at the headers, the requests, the SQL queries that got executed, and all sorts of other stuff. In the web browser, when you're looking at the, the kind of server output. I think Django Debug Toolbar is a little bit too kind of messy to install. That's the only part that I'm not super excited about. I would just like to say like pip install and then put like one line somewhere. I always need to read the docs multiple times and see kind of where I need to put what. But once you get it set up, it's really cool. There's also one tool that I haven't used myself, but I learned about it a couple of months ago, called Django Run DPG. And it's kind of an enhancement into the debugger on the kind of full cap cycle in a way. That if you use like Django REST framework, you can use this with use link. And you can kind of inspect the requests that are made on the front. You will get a better idea if you check the repo. I just wanted to bring it up because it, it seems to be catching up a little bit of interest in the internet. And then most of these happened in the browser or in the, the terminal. But you can also enhance your IDE or your code editor. Now I don't use JetBrains or, or uh, any of those kind of uh, specific IDEs. But you can basically set up breakpoints and, and debuggers without writing any code. So you can just do it on the side panel and then you can run it inside the editor, which gives you a little bit of more kind of, like, a little bit more tools in the context of the code as well. There's a really good talk by Luciana Caput on debugging Django and Flask in VS Code. It's unfortunately unlisted on YouTube, so you need to use the actual link to find it. And then I learned about Colo two months ago in the conference. And, and that kind of blew my mind. So Colo is a, a kind of debugging tool that integrates the VS Code on your development environment. And you can get all the like requests and responses, SQL queries, background tasks, values for local variables, salary jobs, all of that within your VS Code. So it keeps recording all of them into a local, I think there is SQLite database. And then you can explore it right at the editor where you spend most of the time anyway. And there was a really good talk about it by the creator of Colo that you can find from jungoday.dk. I recommend watching it. He also talked about why he doesn't like debuggers. And he did the talk just before me. So it was a, a really nice contrast of somebody telling that debuggers are bad. And then I got with another like debuggers, I love them. But it was a really good, really good kind of contrast on the conference side as well. And Will is, is just a great guy. But I recommend taking a look at the talk because he explains kind of how they ended up where they are. It's currently in beta. It's only on VS Code, but they're, they're currently developing it. And yeah, this is him doing the talk in the, in the conference. So those are some of the technical tools that you can use to dig deeper, get a better understanding of what is happening inside your Django app. But like I said at the beginning, to me, debugging is not a technical task. You, those tools are useful and they're great, but they're not absolutely necessary. Because I think most of the time, debugging is solving human problems, or at least problems created by humans. So the first of my secret pack of tools is what I call a brain dump. And the idea is here that you take a pen and paper and you write down what is the problem. Now, write what is actually the problem, not what you think it is, not how you think it's solved, but like this app, when I do this, this happens. Kind of like a user story type of thing. Don't put any of your own ideas in. Just explain what happened. Then write down all of your assumptions. What do you think is causing it? Where do you think it happens in the code? 
I don't see this. It's really great. And at least in 2019, there was a bunch of people from all around Europe. 